The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, Kimmy is a VIP, written by Mike Miller. Cold open, exterior streets of New York, morning. Jacqueline purposefully walks down the street as Kimmy races to keep up, dodging people as she carries Jacqueline's bags. This is so exciting. Thank you for taking me shopping with you and... A texting businessman bumps into Kimmy. He never looks back. Hey! Kimmy pauses. Jacqueline shouts over her shoulder. Kimmy, keep up. Yes! Kimmy catches up with Jacqueline. They walk together. Remember to give me a spritz of water when I give you this look. Jacqueline makes a parched face. And tell me if you like something I try on. I'm here for you. Because then I know not to buy it. Kimmy makes a confused face. Now let's... Jacqueline stops quickly in front of the sign, Excluse. Well-dressed waiters are inside. Kimmy gets bumped again. Excluse? A restaurant. I could go for some lunch. Ooh, do they have hot dogs? Oh, Kimmy, this is Excluse, Chef Mono 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 Mono's newest gastronomic culinary fusion destination and the most exclusive restaurant in Manhattan. Only those like me will be on the VIP list for his soft, soft, soft opening. Ooh, that must be today. What? It looks like they're setting up. That can't be. I haven't gotten any VIP invitations in a long time. Jacqueline knocks on the glass. A snobby waiter looks over and ignores her. Jacqueline looks at Kimmy uncomfortably and pounds on the glass. The annoyed waiter opens the door. We aren't hiring, and certainly not whatever she is. Hey! Chef Mamo 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 hasn't had his soft, soft, soft opening yet, has he? No. That's a relief. For a second I thought... It's tonight. There must be some mistake. I didn't get my invite yet. I'm Jacqueline White, formerly Jacqueline Voorhees. The waiter looks at a list. No mistake. But... Invites went to everyone they should have. The waiter slams the door. Jacqueline spins to Kimmy. This can't be happening. I'm VIP. Vanilla ice popularity? Verifiably, impressively privileged. I matter. You certainly do. I always say everyone matters, and... No, they don't. I do. But if I'm not on the list... Jacqueline starts hyperventilating. <sighs> I can't breathe. Kimmy grabs a bag and offers it to Jacqueline. Here, breathe in this bag. Jacqueline waves her away, still hyperventilating. One of the designer ones. Kimmy gives Jacqueline a Dolce & Gabbana bag. Not the Dolce & Gabbana for Elton John's sake. Kimmy gives Jacqueline a Tiffany bag and she calms down. Kimmy, you don't get it. If I'm not a VIP, then you're garbage. I was going to say I'm just like you, but yes. Kimmy gets a determined look on her face. No one should be treated like garbage. Kimmy spins toward the window, excited. You can't keep my friend off the list. You'll see us at the opening. I never said us. End of cold open. Act 1. Interior, Kimmy and Titus's apartment. Titus is on the couch, swiping the phone. Kimmy enters. Titus, I need your help. One moment. Cute, cute, not too cute. Titus! Titus raises a finger, then looks confused. Ah! Strawberry shake, wait. You can't disturb my concentration when I'm browsing for fashion ideas. I've got to find something special to wear for Mikey when he gets back from my con, 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 con. Kimmy looks at him curiously. Titus shrugs with annoyance. The Connecticut Concrete Condo Constriction Convention. Oh, picking out something special to wear. So sweet. I want to help. Kimmy skips over and peeks at the phone, then covers her eyes. Whoa! Those models need to wear a lot more clothing. You are so undigestificated. These aren't Kimmy Mark Blue Light specials. They're online dating profiles. It's a great way to get fashion ideas because everyone tries to look their best. Some succeed like moi and... Titus holds up the phone to Kimmy. Cute. Swipe right. Uncute. Swipe left. Titus's phone dings. Ooh, a match! Too bad I'm taken. It's still fun though. Wow. Can I do it too? Sure. You straight people imitate all our ideas anyway. I'll get you set up. I can't now. Jacqueline needs our help. It's very important. Oh, please. That girl is a bottomless pit of needy. Titus takes a sip of sangria and rubs his arm. My swiping arm is already tired. I promised I would get her back on some VIP restaurant opening list. Restaurant? VIP? Very interesting proposal? Okay. I'm in, but first, give me your number. Kimmy hands Titus the phone, takes a pic, and types. You haven't dated since dawn. That sounds funny. We're putting out there, right? Nah. Yay! I'm out! Stop stealing from us. Interior, Jacqueline's condo day. Scantily clad Russ talks on the phone in Russian while ineptly messaging Jacqueline who lays on a massage bed. It's 100 degrees in her condo. Kimmy reels from the heat. Jacqueline and Russ are sweating. Jacqueline's mascara is running. 
Wow, it is hot in here. Yes, Russ is trying to help me relax after this whole VIP thing. Russ hangs up and turns his scantily clad body to Kimmy. She awkwardly tries to look up, down, anywhere but at Russ. I learned the art of Russian massage at a banya sweat house on the Volga River while negotiating the release of priceless plundered Pablo Picasso portrait. Like my plundered invitation. Not yes, exactly. exactly. All I can find is the envelope from the last event. Jacqueline jerks her head off with realization. Or the last one I know of. Who knows how many I've missed? Russ turns to massage her awkwardly. Jacqueline relaxes. Now, now, we can't have you undoing all my hard work. Jacqueline points to a crinkled, gold-plated invitation. Isn't it beautiful? Now it's all I have left from my VIP days. Kimmy picks up the invitation. She sees something exciting. Can I borrow this? Sure, but why bother? I'm just going to have to accept that my pampered life. Russ continues his massage. Jacqueline lets out a groan. It's over now. No! Never give up, no matter how bleak the bunker looks. Kimmy exits, smiling. Russ reaches for a tree branch. I couldn't find a eucalyptus branch, but I think this should work. Cut away to him raising the branch. We can't see Jacqueline. He swings the heavy branch, and we hear her shriek. Hmm. That's not right. Exterior, Park Avenue style street, afternoon. Kimmy and Titus walk up the street. Titus looks at the envelope. The address these invitations come from should be coming up. Ooh, this one is very Billy Crystal, and by that I mean fabulous. Kimmy stops abruptly at a garish doorway. Here it is. Kimmy pushes the intercom button and smiles at Titus. An iPad-sized video screen by the button turns on, showing the doorman. Yes? Hello, I'm Kimmy. This is Titus. Enchanted. And we are here because... Not interested. Are you sure? Have you seen me? Titus flaunts himself to the camera. Kimmy steps in front of him. I need to get an invitation for the Excludes opening for my friend. She's been on your VIP list, see, and I think when she moved... Security cam view of Kimmy smiling while holding the invitation. I don't know the list you speak of. Go away or I'll call the police. Now listen, you... Doorman freezes his face to act like the screen is stuck. Please, you just blinked. You aren't fooling me. Yes, you. Stop all this ridiculousness. Tu es bete con te pie? What did he just say to us? It is... It sounded mean and French. Oh, that is sophisticated trash talk. Now you listen here. Police are on the way, ta-ta. You don't ta-ta us. I do the ta-ta-ing. Me. Kimmy and Titus hear a siren whoop whoop and look up to see a squad car with lights on making its way down the street. Kimmy, I can't get arrested. I'm not successful enough yet to be forgiven with an insincere apology. This is not over, Mr. Intercom Man. We will be back. Kimmy and Titus start to run away, and then Kimmy turns. With a French dictionary! Exterior, Park Avenue style street. Kimmy and Titus stake out a door from across the street. Okay, new plan. We give up and you buy me a fancy dinner set? We are not giving up. We just need to wait until he comes out. Okay, fine. Kimmy's phone dings. Titus looks at Kimmy curiously. I recognize that ding. You got a love connection. Ooh, let me see. Kimmy brightens and looks at her phone. Yes, I did, and ugh. Kimmy shows a Tinder picture of a hipster wearing a money print Speedo, flexing, drinking a beer on a McDuck gold pile. Ah, you have to swipe that away right now. But I don't know anything about him. You know whether he's pretty or not. That's all you need. He might be the love of my life, or a serial kidnapper. I can't do that again. Kimmy, just pick the pretty ones. Titus attempts to wrestle the phone away from Kimmy. No, everyone deserves a chance. Just the pretty ones. Just the pretty ones. I'm swiping yes for maybe. Kimmy wrestles the phone away and does a dramatic swipe. Hey, nothing happened. Whew, he didn't match him anyway. He doesn't even know me. That's how it works. I will hunt him down and show him I'm swipeable, and then... Titus looks across the street and looks surprised. Later, fatal attraction. Look. Titus turns Kimmy's head to see a delivery truck with bottled truffle water being carried in with the door propped open. Mmm, bottled truffle water. This is definitely the place. This is it. Let's go. Kimmy and Titus start running across the street. Okay, but I'm not leaving without at least one bottle of that nectar. Interior, elegant building. Titus and Kimmy walk down the hallway filled with paintings of famous people, Trump, Paris Hilton, etc. A diamond-collared Chinese crested hairless turns the corner and tilts his head at them. Cute puppy. She bends down to pet him and starts nipping at her. I think it knows your report. Bougie, what is it, Schmuckums? The man in the suit with briefcase handcuffed to his wrist turns the corner. How did you get in here? 
Bougie, did they touch you with their dirty middle class paws? Please, with this manicure? We are not leaving until you put my friend back on your VIP list. Who told you about the list? I mean, there is no list. Wait a minute, Valentino briefcase bought Bottega Veneta handcuffs? The list is in there, Kimmy. Man defensively pulls his briefcase to his chest. There's nothing in there. The man starts slowly backing around the corner with Kimmy and Titus advancing on him. Oh please, I know accessories and handcuffs. It's in there. I think you are a big fat liar. Just add my friend's name and... Far behind the man, two huge security guards appear and start menacingly advancing to help the man. Or we can talk about this some other time. Take care of them! Run! Security guards zap Taser in the air as Kimmy and Titus flee. This is not over! Titus starts back and grabs two bottles of truffle water. This might be over, but we got these! Ta-ta! Titus runs after Kimmy. End of Act 1. Act 2. Interior, Jacqueline's condo day. Kimmy walks in Jacqueline's front door with a determined look. Ooh. Jacqueline, do you have a French English dictionary? I thought the French were supposed to be nice. I mean, the Statue of Liberty was an awesome present. And... Kimmy enters to find Jacqueline sprawled across the floor of the empty room, surrounded by fast food remains and wrappers. Sweet by bunker disorder. Uh... Oh, Jacqueline. I embrace the food of my new existence. All at once? I hate it. This food makes me feel full of regret and broken dreams. Please tell me I'm VIP again. I'm working on it. Oh, Kimmy, I wish I was like you and had so little to lose. You don't understand. Oh, I understand. Food isn't just food, it's hopes and dreams and cranberry sauce beans. Interior, bunker flashback. Kimmy enters the room with Cindy's hands over Kimmy's eyes. Gretchen and Donna Maria are waiting. Cindy removes her hands. Surprise! What did you girls do? Well, we noticed every year around Thanksgiving you start getting mopey around, so this year we made you a Thanksgiving dinner. No way! You got a turkey? How? Not a real turkey. We still only have the canned beans. Thank you, God, for these beans that survived your wrath to sustain us dummies. Is el idiota. Thank you, Donna Maria. Amen. We created your favorites. See pinto beans, cranberry sauce, mashed garbanzo beans. We even sculpted a turkey out of mung beans. See? Everyone beams at Kimmy, who looks squeamish and then smiles. I love it. Thank you. Oh, yay. Let's eat. Close up of everyone eating while trying to enjoy it. Kimmy forces down a swallow. Mm. Interior, Jacqueline's condo, day. Kimmy is gazing off as she remembers her flashback. I will free us from the beans. I don't know what that means. Sorry. You are going to that event, Jacqueline. I promise. Oh, thank you, Kimmy. You're so special. All right. Now clean this while I go throw up. Exterior, Kimmy and Titus' apartment. Lillian and Titus are on the doorstep when Kimmy marches up. Uh-oh, that look of determination boxing toy soldier walk. This determined look is because I'm going back at this time. I am not taking... Kimmy pulls out and leaves through the French-English dictionary. No, for an answer. Listen, girl. Preppy Le Pew is nothing but a glorified prima donna. Believe me, I know. We just need to hit him where it hurts. His wardrobe. Okay. <laughs> How do we do that? I don't know. Maybe we steal that delicious tie? Huh? That, that outfit? Would not work without it. Yeah, no. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Oh, I knew that stew you made tasted funny. Hey, that was grade A beef. I meant maybe I can get you into this event. Lillian, please, you're not even allowed in the Dwan Reed anymore. Hey, I just wanted to see if the Spanx fit before I bought them. Wait, you can get us in? How? Sure. I work for some of the best forges in New York. They can duplicate anything. Anything? Even a VIP invitation? Sure, my ex was the best. Oh, I swore I would never talk to him again. Never mind, forget I mentioned it. Lillian, you can't dangle a sparkly thing like that and not let her grab it. Titus acts out pawing at a shiny thing like a cat. Now look at her sad moon face. Please, then we can show them. We can show them all and no one can be shut out or shut in a bunker. Shut up down there. Or told to shut up. Shut is not a nice word in any language. I'll make you shut up. Hey! Don't make me come up there. I really don't want to go up there. Mr. Finkelstein is 92 and his place smells like he has seven cats. Wait, Mr. Finkelstein has eight cats. Stew cat! Did you really feed us? Lillian takes a nervous sip from a Starbucks coffee. Kimmy's phone dings and Titus grabs it. Kimmy stares at the coffee cup. Mm, I told her not to eat from Lillian's cooking. Ooh, this one's cute. Where did you get that cup? From up the street. 
What you stop was your phone. When I was dating, we didn't use computers. Please, no one cares about how they dated in the dark ages. Uh-oh, you've got that determined care bear look again. That's because I know where to find Tinder guy, and I'm going to get my swipe back. Lillian, will you please help us? We'll help you pay your rent. I think I'm supposed to say yes. Whatever. Fine, I'll do it. Interior, Starbucks location one. The tables are filled with people. The barista is taking orders, and a short line is waiting for coffee. The doors burst open as Kimmy runs in with Titus cautiously behind. Aha! Uh -huh. Kimmy looks around the room excitedly. I don't see him. Everyone stares at Kimmy and Titus. Titus addresses the room. Caffeine withdrawal? You've all been where she is now. Okay, Glenn, close, but no cigar. What are we doing here? <laughs> he should be here. Look, that logo is on his cup. Shazam, we found where he gets coffee. Now we just have to wait. Kimmy, there are millions of these caffeination stations. For coffee? Yuck. I'll check them all anyway. There's no way you can Scooby-Doo your way through them all. Just watch me. I'll Scooby-Doo and Scrappy too. Oh, there's another Starbucks across the street. Kimmy darts out the door. Titus looks around. Dear Lord, help this girl. I said go back to your march of mind your own business privacy, I swear. Exterior. Little Slavic land. Lillian walks down the streets of Little Slavic land filled with Slavic mock stores. Duplicate apple store called Beat. Clothing stores, gypsy food, bistro. A guy whistles at her. No, you can't handle this. Lillian looks both ways sneakily and then enters a store. Interior, pickled herring gourmet shop. A bell above the door rings when Lillian walks in. Brana has her back to us behind the herring counter. Ice cream bins filled with different pickled herring. Brana turns. <laughs> well, look at the bowl dragged in. Hello, Brana. I'm here to see Ula. I bet you are. You never do give up, do you? He's mine, Lillian. And you can have him, along with all the rest of his chundras. Brana turns, brandishing a fish scaling knife. I will gut you. Bring it on. Euler comes bursting in from the back room. What is going on? Lillian! Eula? What brings you here? A favor. Come in, let's talk. Slice more hair. Euler extends his arm for Lillian to go to the back room. Lillian and Brana exchange cold stares as Lillian walks by. Interior, herring, cutting room. Lillian and Euler walk to the back herring cutting room. Fish guts are on the counter. Cats move about. Wow, I thought I was crazy, but that one is... Euler tries to make out with Lillian, who slaps him. No! Ugh. Herring breath? I knew one day you'd come back for your big brown bear. I came for a favor, that's all. A favor? Yes, I just need a few forged invitations. Ah, that's child's play. Unless you make it worthwhile. You think I would compromise myself? Just dinner, like we used to. Really? So you're planning to tell... Lillian motions to the other room at Brana. Euler smiles smugly. Why tell her when I just upset her? She's not strong like my babushka. Euler attempts to kiss again. Lillian is tempted, but resists. Sheesh, you haven't changed a bit. Forget it, I should have known. Lillian turns to leave. Euler grabs her elbow. Okay, I'll do this favor. But you must do one thing first. Lillian spins and looks skeptically at Euler. What thing? You know what thing. Lillian's face drops with recognition of the thing. Interior, Kimmy and Titus' apartment. Titus is wearing bright colored fitness clothes and the disc fitness bands walking across the room. Kimmy walks in. Wow, there really are a lot of those Starbucks places. Girl, is that what you've been doing all day? You need to move on. I don't give up that easy. You look so sporty. I know. I thought I'd drop a few pounds before Maggie gets back. You know, not that I need it. Tell me I need it. No. Oh, right, you don't need it. <laughs> I know. But these stretchy things give me resistance or something, so now every move is a workout. Titus reaches down and grabs his wine glass and takes a sip. I just worked out, and I'll do it again. Titus takes a sip of wine, strutting across the room. That's awesome. Thank you. You want to try? Do I ever? Titus reaches down and undoes the Velcro strap on his ankle, and Kimmy freaks out, pushes him backwards, and he falls on his back. Ah! Ah! What is this about you and Velcro? Lillian walks in the room, interrupting them both. Okay, I got your invitations. Lillian hands them over to Kimmy. Well, you are like a candy cigarette. You look like something that would kill me, but you were actually really sweet. Thank you. Eh, I've still got a few connections. I've got to tell Jacqueline. Kimmy runs out of the room. Titus looks at Lillian. Isn't anyone going to ask what I had to do to get the tickets? Titus has a non-reaction and stares at her. Interior, Jacqueline's condo. Jacqueline is standing, looking in a mirror. Kimmy walks in. Jacqueline, I have invitations and we are going to exclude. Oh, Kimmy, that is fantastic. You did it. I knew there must be some mistake for them not to invite me. 
After all, look at me. I'm still spectacular. Yeah! Just wait till that snooty doorman sees us walk in. Oh, we are going. What? We're not going? Of course not. It is exclusive to be invited, but it is far more elite to be invited and not go. Hold your horses. What about the food, the opening, the experience? Yes, and just think how great it is to be above all those things. Oh, we are going. Go get dressed. Dress to impress, if that helps. Well, I do like to impress. Fine. But I'm going to act like I don't want to be there. Deal. End of Act 2. Act 3. Excluse restaurant entrance. Fancily dressed people are looking around in a judgmental manner when Jacqueline, Kimmy, and Titus walk up to the line. A flurry of flash bulbs surrounds the entrance as paparazzi take photos. Titus begins posing for the cameras. Hello, Titus Andromedon. Make sure you get my best side. Here, and here, and here. Wow, this is what restaurants are like now? I can't wait to see the buffet. This is not a fancy sizzler, Kimmy. Just remember to look at everyone as if they are beneath you, and whatever you do, don't be nice. They will eat you alive. Kimmy looks over at a couple who are gazing down and noses at her. Hi! What did I just say? Hi! Your heads are far too high. It's annoying. <laughs> Kimmy, Titus, and Jacqueline move towards the host. Not bad. Please. During a Lion King audition, we once left 30 actors together for two hours in a waiting room. It was like psychological hunger games. Exterior excuse. Kimmy makes eye contact with the doorman at the host stand. He glares at her and she scrunches up her face. Look, it's Mr. Fancy Pants. Mmm, his pants are fancy, but those are perfect for Mikey. Titus takes a pick as the host marches right up to them. You again? Yes, and this time I have these. Kimmy presents invitations to the doorman who looks skeptical. It appears you do belong. Entree? Entree? We just got here, so don't you mean appetizer? Come, everyone. We don't want to be seen outside talking with the help. Jacqueline struts past the doorman. Kimmy follows and turns and smiles triumphantly. Titus walks, pauses, and turns. Until we meet again, ta-ta. Kimmy, Titus, and Jacqueline enter the magical world of elite food. Naked people with food on them lay about the place. Jacqueline takes a deep breath. Mmm, do you smell that? Food? No, status. A waiter passes with a tray of food, and Titus grabs one. Ooh, what are these? Gold-dusted sea urchin cakes on a bed of ceruga caviar. Titus goes to take a bite. And sautéed matsuke mushrooms that grew on a rotting log that was rubbed imperial bacon lard twice a day for eight years. Titus again goes to take a bite. While sung to by a band of monks. Is that it? Finally? He takes a bite and makes a gross face. Fakes, mm. fakes liking it. Mm. I get it. I won't give it. Kimmy makes a nasty face and then tries to smile. Mmm. Honey, it's an acquired taste. Do you think the first time someone ate an oyster they said, yummy? I don't know. No, someone said this is nasty looking goo. But today it's the food you eat when you make it. Oh, I get it. I think. Titus grabs a fancy cocktail from the server passing by. This is the life I was meant for. Decadence, indulgence, all my favorite answers. Lillian really come through with those forged invitations. Wait, these weren't real invitations? No, but I thought... So I'm off the VIP list. For now, but... Oh my god. <laughs> That's why everyone is staring at me. Jacqueline downs the three remaining glasses on a waiter's tray while Titus and Kimmy look on in shock. Fine. If this is my last VIP event, I'm going to make it count. Jacqueline heads off through the crowd with an Indian war cry. I don't know whether to be more terrified or impressed. Both! Titus, you weren't supposed to say anything until I fixed it. Kimmy notices Deirdre across the room. Double Dutch fudge. I think I just figured this out. Kimmy races across the room, leaving Titus all by himself. Don't leave me by myself. I tend to. I should have brought Lillian. Exterior, doorsteps in front of Titus and Kimmy's condo. Lillian is sitting on her steps, eating a bowl of stew. A cat comes up and brushes against her leg and sniffs. Why didn't I get an invite for myself? Stupid, stupid, stupid. The cat looks up at her. Mmm, you're a plump one. Interior, excluse. Kimmy runs up to Deirdre. How did you get in here? I was going to ask you the same question, but I already know. Oh, really? Just what do you know? I know that you are the reason Jacqueline isn't on the VIP list. Oh, please. That's ridiculous. At that moment, someone stops by to interrupt. Oh, Deirdre, we were so shocked to hear about Jacqueline. 
Tragic Botox accident. So sad. Thank you so much. It's been so difficult. If you need anything. Excuse us. Kimmy pulls her into the bathroom. Interior bathroom. Counters are filled with perfumes, lotions, champagne, puppies to pet, and an attendant. Ooh, is this the bathroom? Mouthwash, hand lotion, puppy. Wait, stay focused. I know you got Jacqueline kicked off the VIP list. I did not! Please! Babysitter's Club Mystery Master Sleuthing Tip Number One. Look for the person with the most motive, which is you. Whatever! I could care less about that charity event. Honey, I didn't mention the charity event. Ha! Huh. Fine. But it's too late now. Oh yeah. Maybe if you just got her off the VIP list, but you told everyone she was dead. Yeah, so? So how's it going to look when everyone sees Jacqueline here? She's here? No, you're lying. Hair gel, perfume, counseling? The therapist couch is off to the side, with a the therapist sitting on a chair looking at them speculatively. Kimmy stares. I would, but I already have a therapist. Well, kind of, too. Are you an alcoholic, too? Kimmy spins back to Deirdre. Fibbers make things up, and I'm not a fibber. Come on, I'll show you. Interior excludes night. Kimmy is pulling Deirdre through the crowd. Jacqueline is making a spectacle of herself at the bar, drinking. Give me another. Mama's loading up for the night. Interior excludes outside the bathroom moments later. You have to get her out of here! No, you need to find everyone you've talked to and undo whatever this Botox thing is unless you want to look like a big stinky liar. And no one likes a big stinky liar. Interior excludes moments later. Titus is in the middle of five pretentious looking white rich snobby people. Yes, our new restaurant with Chef Kimmy Von Schmittenger. It's so rare, we only serve extinct animals and vegetables. I've never heard of Chef Von Schmittenger. Oh dear, I've said too much. I should move on. Actually, I do remember hearing about it. Yeah, me too. Uh-huh. As I was saying, this new restaurant is so exclusive, this place. Titus points all around him to imply he means exclusive. Might as well put golden arches outside and save millions served. <laughs> oh, Titus, you are awful! Absolutely awful. I know, awful. Look, there's Chef Nat. Titus waves and blows a kiss at Kimmy. Interior, exclusive dining room, night. Kimmy and Deirdre are squared off against each other. Kimmy notices Titus waving at him and waves back. Titus is waving. Hi. Hi! Stop waving. Fine. I'll tell everyone she didn't die. I'll say it was a rehab cover-up. Or in jail. Kimmy is glaring at Deirdre, arms crossed. Fine, I'll fix this. Just don't embarrass me, right? Kimmy leans in and whispers. Discreet. I get it. The sound of a fork clinking a champagne glass fills the room. Kimmy and Deirdre turn to see Jacqueline signaling a toast. Attention, attention everyone. Oh, sweet cabbage patch cereal. Kimmy runs. Jacqueline bumps a naked sushi guy from the table. I have a few things to say. Sorry, Wasabi, move it. Interior, exclusive, main crowd. Kimmy weaves through the crowd of pretentious people. Make way, coming through. Sorry! People extend hands to Kimmy and she brushes them away. Interior, exclusive, bar area. Jacqueline starts to climb on the table. I've been waiting to tell you. Interior, exclusive, between Kimmy and the bar. Uh oh, quick everyone, one last selfie. Titus holds out his phone to take a selfie with the group. Say, pretentious! Kimmy reaches Titus and his group on the way to Jacqueline. Titus, we need a distraction. Sing! 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 Sing what? I'm not good under pressure. Um, mm, meow, 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 meow. Oh, oh my god, I'm channeling the lady in too. <laughs> Interior excludes where Jacqueline is on top of the table. Kimmy runs into the naked guy, yelps, and turns to Jacqueline. Jacqueline, wait! Kimmy, it's okay. I'm free from all these people, and I'm going to tell everyone. How happy you are to be back as a VIP after your miraculous recovery! They can shove this... what? It's a miracle! Let's all give Jacqueline a round of applause! Kimmy starts clapping all by herself. Interior excludes moments later. You heard Chef Kimmy, clap! Clap like you want Tinkerbell to live! The people around Titus start clapping and soon the entire room joins in. Kimmy looks up, beaming. Jacqueline smiles. Thank you. Thank you all. I love you so dearly. It was your love for me that helped pull me back from the brink. Your deep, deep admiration of me that did it. The room erupts with applause. Jacqueline takes a bow, multiple bows, then drops off the table. I'm so sorry. Everyone thought you were dead. Brilliant, Kimmy. I should have faked my death years ago. I'm back and I'm famous. What did I ever recover from? Botox fatality. I only lapsed into a coma once from Botox. Titus runs up to Kimmy and Jacqueline. That was such a great speech. So remember when you left me to entertain myself? 
You should never do that. I may have said things. A crowd of pretentious people catch up to Titus and start trying to meet Kimmy. Chef Kimmy, we must do lunch. And this may be about those things. Chef, I'm flattered. Yes, let's do lunch. Can we do hot dogs? Chef Kimmy, we're having Sting play his loop at this week's Savannah Yoga. You must come. Okay. Chef Kimmy, you must join us for Gwyneth Paltrow's ladies' night. We are going to steam our vaginas. Ew. Sorry, everyone. I need to borrow the chef for a second. Titus pulls Kimmy from the center of the group of pretentious people who continue to chirp. Chef Kimmy. Wow, I was wrong. These people are so nice. Oh, darling, they're not. I told everyone you were a famous chef opening up an even more exclusive restaurant than Exclusive. This is called sucking up to get something. Those fakers. I should have known that steaming thing was a fake. No, that's just crazy rich. This is all crazy. Someone has to tell the truth, and it's Kimmy Comeuppance time. And, and do all the fun I've had? Jacqueline slides up to them. I'm definitely the most VIP person here now, so we need to leave. What about your big plan to tell everyone off? Someone else will do it someday. Wait a minute. Today is that day. Comeuppances are coming. Kimmy walks across the room. Time slows as everyone reaches out to her and she brushes them away. Kimmy climbs up to the table, smiles broadly, and makes a huge arm swipe motion. I swipe you all. No. The room goes quiet. That's right. I'm only inviting you. Kimmy points at Jacqueline, who smiles as if she doesn't care. And you. Kimmy points at Titus, who claps enthusiastically. Oh, I'm in it. Ha. But not you. Kimmy points at Deirdre, who glares back. To my new restaurant. And all you naked people. But wear clothes. The rest of you, swipe, swipe, swipe. Kimmy jumps off the table and Jacqueline and Titus grab her. And don't try to find the restaurant, peasants. Sorry everyone, that's how it goes. They run out the door and Kimmy turns to do one more swipe. Swipe. Exterior, Kimmy and Titus' apartment, evening. Kimmy and Titus return to find Lillian on the steps. Well, well, well. Looks like you all had a nice night. That was the bell of the ball, but I'm exhausted. Now I'm off. I must get my beauty sleep. Titus' phone dings. He reads a text, then skips gleefully. Mikey's back! <laughs> Don't wait up. Titus smiles, turns, and skips away. Kimmy looks at Lillian. Thank you again, Lillian. I hope you, did, I hope you didn't do anything, you know. Interior, herring shop. Euler is wide-eyed with excitement. Oh my, what a big fish you are. Yes, like that, Mishka. Lillian is doing a puppet show with two fish in costumes. Kiss me, and we will rule the oceans together. Lillian makes the puppets kiss. A gleeful Euler claps his hands like a child. Lillian rolls her eyes. Exterior, Kimmy and Titus' apartment. Nah, anyway, mission accomplished. I still have one more thing to do. Tag. Interior, Starbucks, location two. Kimmy runs in the door and looks around. She spots someone. Gaha! Kimmy marches over to a table with a group having coffee. It took 231 Starbucks, but I found you, Mr. Tinderman. I don't know you. That's right. You don't. I'm awesome, but you swiped me before you got to know me. You think you know me from one photo. Well, what if my photo looked like this? Or like this? Or this? Surprise, those were all the same person. You missed out on me. I'm important. In fact, I'm VIP. Everyone is VIP. What do you have to say to that? The woman next to the Tinder man stands up and smacks him. You're on Tinder, you bastard. The woman starts storming out. She follows. Honey, I can explain. The woman exits with the Tinder man in pursuit. Kimmy looks around. This is why we should all get to know people first, unless they want to show you their bunker. Take it out.